it is. It's my best James Bond impression. James Bond probably should have been running a single stack, but instead they put him with a PPK that you can't shoot without slicing the back of your hand open. But here's what we got today. We got a Wilson Combat. Uh, it's a protector. It's a single stack 1911. This one happens to be chambered in nine mil. And I've long been a proponent. You want to shoot the nicest thing you'll ever shoot, go shoot a full size 1911. Chambered in nine millimeter. Now, I'm going to level with you, okay? I was actually nervous about this review, and here's why. I approached Wilson Combat, and I said, hey, uh, you don't know me, but I'm a big, like, I love 1911s, and I make stupid videos that seven people watch, and uh, I would love to review one of your guns. And much to my surprise, they actually wrote me back, and they said, hey, we would be happy to have you do that. And they, uh, they sent me a gun I get to test, uh, and I was like, oh my God. It, like, it was almost like inheriting a baby or something. Like, you found a baby and you were like, God, I, like, I want to be a good dad to this, but like, what if I don't like it? Do I just put it back on, in the river in the basket or do I keep it and figure out how to be a better dad? And I, I was nervous about this gun. I was like, what if I don't like it? Okay. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you this we'll get into some specs and all that kind of shit, but. One of the things I really appreciated in dealing with Wilson was they were incredibly precise to deal with. And I know that's a weird statement, but here's what I mean by it. There's so much sloppiness in probably every era, but this is the one that I happen to live in, so I make it this era. Sloppiness meaning like, yeah, sure, we'll do X, Y, Z thing, or we'll be there this time or whatever. And it's like, why can no one just stick to what they say they're actually going to do? Wilson said, uh, we will let you do a review and we will send you ammo to test on that gun. And almost much to my surprise, when everything came in, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Like they sent me a gun that I get to test and they sent me ammo for the gun. Like I felt like a professional. I know I'm not a professional at this, but I felt like it. And then I felt this pressure to almost like this. And I was like, well, what if I don't? And the moral dilemma began okay i'm just letting you behind the curtain because i think it will become relevant as we proceed okay so i'm going to do something that's a little bit different for these reviews if you will i'm going to give you a a bit of a first impression okay because i'm big on first impressions and um here's where i'm driving at with this okay the wilson protector i mean any wilson combat 1911 it ain't cheap you know you're talking about probably on the bare minimum, like three grand for some of the EDC X9 type things, you know, upwards of uh, five-ish or so. This one was like four to 4,100 because it had an ambi safety on it, okay? And I was underwhelmed when I first got the gun, okay? And I know, I get it. You're like, dude, super, it's superficial. Like, what's the gun like? I, get, I got it. We'll get there, right? Calm down. I'm just telling you, my first impression, is hey look if i spend a bunch of money on a gun make me feel like i just joined a club okay and that would be maybe my biggest ding on the gun is like i don't know it just feels like a cheap case and then it came in this bag that's like something out of a crime scene or something um so it was just a little underwhelming on the first impression okay take that for what you will is jake superficial yes maybe Another ding that I would give you, largely in the superficial category as well, would be the grips. The grips aren't bad. I just don't love them. To be perfectly honest with you, they've been fine in terms of how they actually feel and perform. They're solid. I don't really have much that I can criticize there for some reason, that pattern. I don't know, just doesn't do it for me. It's little nitpicky stuff. I get it. I'm a nitpicky person. I've got a, you know, I obsess about little details, right? So the bag, the presentation, the grips, these are like the little, little things that I notice. But that said, let's dive into some of the more spec oriented stuff on the gun. Pew, pew. You know, it's even more American than this 1911. Owning a home. It's like a really good idea, like money wise. And guns are great too. But big houses are the best though, like with a pool and I want a view and I need a walk-in closet, like a huge one. Let's, let's uh, just go ahead and stick to the script. So call 1911 Syndicate next time you need a realtor. They're like way better than some of the other ones. 
Okay, let's hit a little bit on uh, spec land here. So we already talked about five inch government length, 1911, chambered in nine mil. You can also do the protector in 45. I think they also list 38 super, but again, what weirdos are running that? Uh, we've got checkering on the mainspring housing. So you've got nice grip here. Um, da, 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 da. Everything generally speaking is designed with a duty or carry gun being at the forefront, okay? So everything's about as slim as you could make it uh, to that point. So the safety, it's an ambi on uh, this particular gun that they sent me, fortunately, since I'm a lefty. And uh, it's pretty thin. I have not found myself missing it where you like, you come up and you're trying to shoot and you're like, oh fuck, it's so, it's so skinny that I missed it. Haven't had any of that, but it's just a little bit slim so that someone who is in a duty capacity, you know, isn't gonna hit it on plate carriers or, or whatever they might be running. So you got the safety, same story on the uh, slide release there. I don't really notice it. I mean, they say it's a little bit slimmed down. To me, it feels normal. Again, I haven't had an issue as a lefty hitting it and I'm doing it with my trigger finger. Has not been a concern for me. Uh, trigger, uh, let's just go to the trigger. No particular order to the flow here. Trigger is a little bit of take up there, which is what you would see most high-end 1911s. Very clear wall and it goes right after that. Uh, the trigger is, trigger's money. And then the reset, trigger's money. It's good, you, you know, to be perfectly uh, honest with you, I mean, good 1911 triggers are pretty similar across the board, to be honest with you. Probably the biggest distinguishing thing, is it flat or is it curved? This one is curved. I go back and forth with myself all the time. Do I prefer flat, curved, the, it literally depends on my mood. Uh, the trigger is really good. It's got some nice little serrations on the trigger itself so that you can get a little grip. Again, with duty carry stuff in mind, you know, just a little bit of traction there. That way, if you were, um, you know, bloody or sweaty or whatever thing has happened to you, you at least have a little bit of traction on that trigger. Uh, rail, so again, attaching lights. The sights, uh, Big fan of the sights, big fan of the sights. So we've got a nice ledge on the rear here that is perfectly fine for catching pretty much anything you throw at it, right? So, I mean, you can rack that rear sight off of just about whatever you're gonna find, right? It's gonna just kind of eat it and do its thing. I like the rear sight. We've got a U-notch back there. That uh, front, fr front fiber optic sight I can't tell you why, but I swear to God, it seems brighter to me than most front sights. I mean, that makes no sense. So please put zero faith in it. It's been a long, hot day, but I mean, that front sight, you pick it up real, real nice, um, especially in bright daylight like we're in. Couple little things. Uh, we've got trigger undercut here so you can get a nice high grip underneath that trigger. We have Rear slide serrations, front slide serrations. This would be probably one of my very few places that I would say it's a little uh, off from what I would do. And all I mean by that is I would like more front serrations, but I would like them a little bit further forward. To me, like that's where I want them, like essentially right here, and they start right here. So to me, they just start a little further back. It's not like it's unmanageable, and let's be honest, even if they were non-existent, you're still fine. It's not gonna affect your ability to run your gun, but I just wish I'm fine with them being there. I just wish they extended a little bit further forward because that's where my hand naturally wants to come for a press check up here. Small tweak, but just little stuff like that. Um, the barrel, so you will notice there is uh, no bushing on the barrel. So we have a bull barrel. They call it a cone flush fit crowned barrel. So we've got a nice barrel on there, or a, uh, a nice crown on the end of that barrel. And you will also notice that that barrel is obviously a bull barrel. They call it cone. I'm assuming really we're talking about the same thing here. The point of that is to add a little extra weight to the end of the gun so that I have a little bit heavier front end to mitigate some of that recoil. And then the barrel is also fluted. So it is a pretty cool barrel. Um, you know, it's not like anyone ever shoots barrels and like barrels become their favorite thing in the world. It's just one of those things, hey, if the gun's working great, then that's good enough for me. But that is a pretty cool barrel. 
Again, the whole thing is flush fit here. So there's no bushing or anything that could get snagged on. Not that I can really think of a reason why a bushing would get snagged, but there's nothing up here to get snagged. Then uh, let's see, I was also gonna mention the top treatment. So we do have a nice top treatment on top of that, which is really just lines that are running uh, across the length of the whole slide. They have very little, you know, like they're a little bit recessed, which is interesting. To tell you the truth, I haven't paid attention to enough of my 1911s to go, hey, are most of these things like a little bit recessed into the slide? I mean, it is ever so subtle but these lines are a tad bit reset into that slide, which I suppose if I was making an argument for it, I would just say, hey, essentially it's lowering down the mass of that slide, which is gonna give me less distractions when I'm trying to pick up that rear and front sight. But regardless, even if that's total bullshit what I just said, uh, they do seem to be a little recessed and I like it. So take that for what it is. That, and I will, even though this is not a review about these, um, I had a personal new 1911 in uh, nine mil that was coming. So I purchased a bunch of the Wilson Combat uh, Vickers mags. So these are the new ones. They're different from those of you who've run Wilson mags over the years, which I would still say Wilson mags are probably the gold standard that most of us have used. The only real downside them, of them was they had windows that were in the mag, so there was more opportunity for dirt and things like that to get in there. The new Vickers ones are really sealed up, so they're meant for duty use. I picked up some of these in stainless steel and more of like a parkerized finish. I don't have any of those on me, but um, they're totally matted out, so if you were carrying the gun at night, that's a consideration. And then I picked up some with either a steel base pad or the, these bugs are vicious today, or the aluminum one, you'll obviously see that inside of the gun, and they don't ship the gun with these mags, these are like literally my mags. Um, you'll see the, alu or the, yeah, the aluminum ones are pretty flush fit, so even if you do have a slight mag well on the gun, it's not gonna hang out enough to be obnoxious. Vice versa, if you're running the steel base plate, you're gonna catch a little bit hanging off the bottom there, which if you're in more of like a uh, law enforcement capacity where you're not worried about concealing the gun because you're, you're just openly carrying it, that base pad's gonna be nice because it's gonna add a little bit of weight and a little bit of a snag point. If for some reason, whatever, you needed to strip that mag out, it's gonna give you a nice little ledge to be able to hook onto your holster, right? And strip that mag out. So little considerations there. It's not really a review on the mags, but I figured I would mention that since a lot of people do run Wilson mags. The Vickers ones have been very solid thus far. And really the last note on this is the actual mag well itself. Look, for, at least from my amateur eyeball, most minimalist 1911 mag wells have a similar effect. They all, you know, look like they're roughly the same thing and I reload them all about the same, which frankly, reloading a 1911, not the easiest thing in the world. Small, you know, it's like a box in a box. It's not the easiest thing. I reload this gun a lot better than the other single stacks that I have or have shot. Um, can't fully explain why, but it's a very, very effective magwell. And I've been having a much, still not great at it, but had a much easier time reloading mags into that magwell. So big points for the Wilson Combat magwell. All right, that's that. So let's talk about now that we've hit some specs and all that fun, juicy information. Uh, let me tell you what I think about it. And I'm gonna go back to how I started this thing, which was, I was very nervous about this review, okay? And here's why, Wilson was phenomenal to deal with. And despite what you guys may see on camera and you might think that like, you know, I'm some jackass and everything, I really am probably very different to deal with professionally than what you would see here. And I really appreciate when I deal with companies who, frankly, they got their shit together. And that was my experience of Wilson was, man, they got their shit together. And like they said, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do X, Y, Z, and we're gonna send you this. And they did exactly what they said they were gonna do under the timeline, they said they were gonna do it. So I went into this as a giant fan of the company, Wilson Combat. And then the gun comes in and I'm like, fuck, man, this case sucks, you know? And again, superficial Jake. Yes, but you gotta start somewhere in life, right? And looks matter. So I get the case and I'm like, eh, you know, 
meh. Uh, that's kind of what I was left with. And so the, the tie breaker round was really, well, let's see how this thing shoots. And so we brought this thing out a, a week ago when we were doing some of the other reviews in this content cycle, if you will. And I shot it and I was immediately relieved. Straight up, I was immediately relieved, okay? And I said, but I don't wanna do the portion that we're doing today until next week when we're filming some more stuff because I feel like I need more time with this because I've been through a little bit of a, man, Wilson's awesome, ah, presentation sucks. And I was like, okay, now I don't know what I think. I'm so confused, mom, right? And so brought it back out, been shooting this today, doing a lot of one-handed drills with it, a little bit of two-hand as well. And I feel like I, I need to say this. So what I think of this as a... Uh, a really nice production gun versus a custom 1911. I know that might, say it might sound strange and it might almost sound like an insult, but I don't mean it that way, right? This gun is designed for uh, law enforcement officers, people who are gonna go to the range a lot. And if you guys see me squirming out here and you're like, yo, what is up with this dude? I look like I am in Africa covered in bugs right now and getting lit up out here. So just know I'm doing my best. It's oriented for people who carry it, duty, law enforcement, right? I don't imagine this is carried by any military units, but same thing, right? A gun that's designed with a purpose in mind, to be used and to be hard used. And here's the reality. It does that very, very well. Very, very well, okay? And I'm gonna prove a point here in a minute, but it does that very, very well. It doesn't have the most beautiful finish that I've ever seen on a gun. Okay, like we recent, like I re recently we filmed our uh, sort of second round of the Cabot Nero, and I stated in that it's the most beautiful finish I've ever seen on a gun. I mean, it, it's perfect, and it just blows me away when I look at it. Okay, this is not that. This is a little more dulled down. But here's the reality: this is really meant for like duty, right? To be tough and to work and to like get chambered off of shit and get beaten up. And under that premise, I love it. So here's what very critically matters with this gun. How does it shoot? And I get it, yes, that's very important with every gun. But when I shot this gun is when I is when I loved it. I, I went from going, I'm kind of neutral on it, to be honest with you. I'm like, it, it uh, I was kind of neutral on it. I didn't really feel much one way or another to when I shot it, I thought, shit, that's nice. Like that's really nice you know and shooting it one-handed and it's very uh obviously it's going to be a very accurate gun but earlier today when i was running two-handed drills with this gun i thought man that gun is easy to shoot i mean like that gun is easy to shoot quickly i'm not a fast shooter like i'm not saying that to be modest i'm not a fast shooter okay like i'm just not and you can run the piss out of this gun okay and it made me love it. And to, to make my point a little bit more clear with this, I now have a problem, which is, I think I wanna buy it. What, no, I know I wanna buy it. Do I wanna spend the money on it? Like, I'm telling you that because I'm trying to bring you in, even though I dinged it for a couple little things right early on, I'm like, yo, I think I'm gonna buy that gun. And, and, and I'm not exaggerating. I'm not out here saying that to like favor Wilson. I'm almost kind of annoyed by it because I don't need to spend several more thousand dollars on another 1911 right now. I don't need, I don't need this in my life, Wilson. You did this to me. Damn it. You did this to me. You make me lose money. Okay. I got a credit card bill now coming because of you guys. Thanks a lot, but it's so nice to shoot. And the honest to God truth is I don't know that I would carry it a lot just because of the sheer size of it. I'd be more likely to carry a commander. But yo, I'll run, I'll shoot that gun a lot. I'll shoot it a lot. Like as much as I shoot my 2011, because it's nice and it reloads well and the trigger's crisp and it's accurate, but it shoots so incredibly soft because it's, he I mean, yo, straight up, the gun's heavy. And that heaviness, the con is it's heavy. The pro is, makes it real nice to shoot. You throw some nine mil in that, that thing's real nice to shoot and it looks goddamn good too, right? And it's really, really growing on me. And it's a sense of relief at the end of this video that can honestly come here and tell you, because I have battled these demons lately going, man, these guys who make videos 
I'm a small peon, nothing YouTube reviewer, reviewer compared to a lot of these guys, but I'm like, yo, it's gotta be like morally challenging when these guys get free guns. This is not free, right? But like they get free guns and then of course they wanna be positive even if they don't like it because they don't wanna shit where they eat. Yo, straight up, it's real talk. I'm so relieved that I like this gun because I'm like, I'm bummed because I'm gonna probably lose money, but I'm happy because I'm like, man, I've always wanted a Wilson, and this is the first one, frankly, that I've ever shot. And the fact that I went for, on this roller coaster from like, I'm super excited to, ooh, I don't know about this, to, oh my God, I love it, I wanna spend money on it. Like, it's a roller coaster. It's a roller coaster, everyone. And that's my life, right? So take that for what it's worth, you know? It's, it's a dope gun, it's, you know, it's not cheap. Shoots phenomenally well, would be a great gun for someone, especially if you don't need a ton of capacity. Yo, straight up, you're in California. You're like, I got a 10 round mag limit or a capacity limit. Whew, tough to argue against something like that. Fuck bugs. That's the name of this review. Yo, are we, am I in the Congo right now? Fuck bugs, that's the end of the review. Sorry, Wilson, I didn't want to end the review like that, but these bugs are relentless. I love your gun. Send me the bill. Actually, so I'm gonna give you an email address for someone else that I know. Just send the bill to them. They'll they'll take care of it and give it to me. And thanks for watching.